Hello. So this was actually scheduled to be like a, a live event that the sound site would be launched from here, but the time changed on Sunday. So it's seven o'clock in New York and people didn't want to stay until seven. So they just launched the site at 6 p.m. 6 p.m. there, which was an hour ago. So I think it's good enough. So here, um, so this is the website for the new journal that just came live, as I said, was gonna come live straight from here, but came live one hour ago um, worldwide. So that's the, that's the main um, web page of the journal. These are the three papers that have already been submitted. So I'll give a very quick view and then I'll go slowly over each component. So this is an, they wanted a picture that represented translation and I'll tell you how I came up with this picture. So, um, and then the, they also did a press release, uh, the Nature Group did, which is about, you know, both the conference and the launch of the journal. So the, the conference was, they, they're putting here the, our, so if you go here, you go straight to our program. And, And so the site, if you go uh, to look at papers or to submit uh, something, the latest articles are here, but there are only three that are, just came live now. There would be an archive for all the papers. Uh, press releases would be here, so let's see. I think they have a press release about the journal itself. So, um, so here's the launch of the journal, which is in New York for, is, is right now, it's the end of the day. Um, for them uh, on the April 4th. So, um, so the, I mean, you can see all of this for yourself on the website. So this is basically describing uh, the journal and why, why we need it and emphasizing here the translation psychiatry bridges the gap between uh, discovery and healthcare by fostering highlighting the pathway from discovery to clinical applications healthcare and global health. So um, in, the, in the website itself, if people want to submit papers, you have here this online submission uh, site that you need to register. And each person, most many people who are already uh, published there just have their login and password. If not, you, you register for an account. You have here uh, author instruction, instruct, uh, instructions, which is amazing that how people don't read instructions. In this journal specifically, we don't, um, we don't have a letter section because it's a lot of work uh, for me. So people write a letter about the paper, the author didn't see this, the author responds yes, but I was right anyway, etc. And then you can publish that dialogue as a letter to the editor. I think some new formats, they put um, like a blog and you can put the comments on the side like uh, PLOS one and, uh, does that and the other PLOS journals. But um, a formal, like traditional letter to the editor section is a lot of work and then you have to coordinate publication and then they have to come up more or less uh, close to the time that the paper came. So I didn't think it was a good use of time. But in spite of that, we recently had a letter to the editor submitted. So the person called it an original research article, but you read it's a letter to the editor. And we have very explicit instructions not to, not to have that. So here, I'm not gonna do this, but you can click here and get the instructions. So the, the key manuscript types are original research articles and reviews without these uh, short letters that either comment on papers or people put like, like a mini article there. So um, this thing of uh, instructions, I think it's very illustrative for people, uh, you know, dealing with traditional media, you know, uh, new media which is very annoying to people who are processing the papers when the person who's doing the submission shows that they haven't even looked at the instructions and are not familiar with the journal. So molecular psychiatry, the abstract is what we call, an, and, and this translation of psychiatry as well, both of them. The abstract is just a single paragraph, it's unstructured. So you just you know, write you know, 200 words, 250 words, summarizing everything, there is no section. Like in some journals like JAMA now, for example, they put introduction, I think that the PLOS journals, you have introduction, methods, results, conclusion. We don't have those sections, never had them. 
So people send to me the papers formatted like that. It annoys me so much because it shows that they don't know the journal, they've never looked at the journal, they didn't read the instructions, and they just don't care. They send it somewhere that had that requirement. It was not accepted, and then they just, you know, shipped it to me without the courtesy of reformatting per the journal standards. So it's very annoying. So people should please uh, read the instructions for authors. Then the three papers that came already is my own editorial that was uh, printed and people gave a copy. Tom Minsel, who is the director of the National Institute of Mental Health at the NIH, he published uh, this editorial here. In my computer, I think it goes here to increase the size. Yeah. So he wrote, um, he called this new journal a bridge to somewhere. And he says with over 5,000 journals indexed in PubMed, the announcement of a new journal generally elicits a raised brow along with some variation on these questions. Do we need another journal? Who can read even 10% of the journals covering neuropsychiatric science, either basic or clinic? Will more journals just permit more publishing of mediocre science? And the answer depends on the journal or more specifically on the topic. And then he goes uh, here to talk about the, the importance of translational psychiatry. Um, and he said what I said yesterday as well, which is that in 2011, none of these uh, findings from the last several uh, decades are changing how clinicians diagnose or treat serious mental illness. And although neuroimaging has given us a window into brain development, connectivity, and its function, is there any scan that reliably influences clinical care? And even though that Alzheimer's can be you know, diagnosed by imaging now, it doesn't really change the course of dementia. So he puts... Um, he does a little propaganda highlighting some NIMH-funded projects that have potential uh, for translation. And, and then he you know, essentially talks about the field. One thing which is interesting is that as he describes translation, he calls, he uses the terms T1, T2, and T3 that I described yesterday, and, but he stops there. So the, the, what I call the T0 and T4 and T5, he does, it's not conceptualized by, by many other people yet. So the way he puts his, you know, T1 going from discovery to the, the clinic, uh, two from um, T2, the clinical trials, and then T3, he talks about, let's say, even if a 20,000 uh, PET scan could re reliably diagnose bipolar disorder, so that would be a T1 discovery. And even if this could show to work in a real world clinic, so that would be a T2 discovery, so some clinical trials show that it did work in the clinic. Would uh, this scan be reimbursed by payers or required by guideline? By guideline, so that would be T3. And he kind of uh, stops there. So um, he he was very complimentary, and he says that the journal has an opportunity to make a difference by publishing the best science at a time when we can see this historic bridge being built that will link science, practice, and policy. And he says, I, for one, will watch and read it with enthusiasm. So this was very nice, and um, we had one. We have like two or three additional, actually seven papers that are about to be put on the line, uh, online, but the one that came out uh, an hour ago, the first one was this one, which was very interesting, that um, vasopressin is a hormone that's been shown to um, mediate social behavior in animals and in humans, and it's been uh, considered like a target for genetic studies in autism. So they apply these authors um, up, up, uh, who are from the NIH and from Germany, from the NIH in Germany, they applied um, a functional MRI test with a social recognition masking task. And then they used a double blind procedure that the volunteer himself sprayed intranasally, either with saline or with um, vasopressin, uh, 45 minutes before the test. And then they looked at brain performance in relation to these uh, social cues and they showed that um, vasopressin induces a regional specific alteration in a keynote of the theory of mind network, the left temporoparietal junction. And they proposed that this could be a neurobiological mechanism for prosocial neuropepti uh, neuropeptidergic effects in humans that suggest novel treatment strategies. And what's very interesting is that you go to the methods here. So they say that they use this face stimuli, uh, which is from a standardized setting that we've been you know, made available for research. So you can just click here, and you can actually go to the site of the entity that gives this um, these kind of a set of faces. So people who are in neuropsychology are very familiar with this. So um, this is the, the MacBrain.org, and the, the, 
the internet here is kind of slow, so it is downloading slowly, but the, the battery of faces is here. So this was an originally sponsored by the uh, MacArthur Foundation. And uh, if you just patient a little bit, you'll see that the, they use the, those are the faces that they use. So in the methods of the papers, you can actually cross-reference to outside resources. And people who are reading the paper, they don't have to have the resource actually in the paper. You can just use the link. So it's coming here. Yes. So these are the faces that come up in the, you know, recognition of emotion. And then, um, and some pictures were taken from the International Affective Picture System. So you can go there as well and actually see the pictures. So that's one of the advantages of the online, um, so here is this NIMH Center for the Study of Emotion and Attention. And here's where uh, you can get the, the other pictures that they used. So the, the, the beauty of the <coughs> online systems now for the for papers is that um, you can actually, within the paper, because you know people were talking yesterday that people, some people like the texture of the books, etc. but uh, doing it online or an iPad or um, a laptop or hard, hard desk computer, you can actually click on the, on the methods and the parts of the paper that you want, and then you can see much more information. So here it shows in the figures. And what's interesting is that the new type of paper is gonna come for all journals. It doesn't, you know, it's not gonna be restricted to this one. That you can actually condense and collapse sections of papers. <coughs> so if you think that the paper's discussion is just a lot of blah, 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 and you're interested in the data, you kind of uh, collapse the, <laughs> the discussion and you can enhance the figures, for example. And then you can print your own version or create your own PDF of that. You, you essentially, you get the bits and pieces that you want of the paper and you can make your own manuscript um, based on what the author has there. So you don't have to print like, you know, 20 pages of methods. It's don't care about the methods. You want just the point. You can just uh, click on some, you know, you, you each like, you know, a small component of the paper is you can either click a button, it expands or you click it again and it shortens. And then you create your own version of the paper based on how much or how little you want to see. So that's what I, I had to do today. We just had one research paper just launched uh, an hour ago in New York and many more will, are on the pipeline to come. So I thank you very much for being here and I hope you visit the site very frequently. Thank you.